From the center of the universe, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, this is the SDM Show with your host, Rob Cairns. The SDM Show focuses on business, life, productivity, digital marketing, WordPress, and more. Sit back, relax, grab your favorite drink, and enjoy the show. Here is Rob. Hey, everybody. Rob Cairns here. I'm the founder, CEO, and chief creator of Amazing Ideas at Stunning Digital Marketing. In today's podcast, I sit down with my friend, Michelle Frechette, and we talk about the WordPress community. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the podcast. Hey, everybody, Rob here. Today I'm here with Michelle Frechette. How are you today, Michelle? I'm good, Rob. Thanks for having me here. Oh, uh, uh, pleasure. I, I thought we'd get into... Uh, a really good chat about the community and how to build the communities. Because as far as I'm concerned, you're the one of the best community builders out there in the world. Oh, thank space. you. No, you're welcome. I do try. <laughs> I, I, I know you try. And sometimes I, I joke and say, has Michelle cloned herself today? Are you, you seem to be in <laughs> more places than I am. So that says something. So. I, I've heard that once or twice, I think. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sure you have. So I have to ask you the question. It's something we've never talked about. How did you find yourself into WordPress originally? Sure. So I was working at a uh, massage school. I was the campus director of the massage school. It was the last school I worked at. I was in uh, 20, year, 20 years in higher education. And my best friend was a graduate of the school, and she said to me, you know, the thing is that massage therapists graduate, and then they, they're just out on their own, and they kind of flounder, because they understand how to do massage, but they don't really understand how to run a business. Mm -hmm. And she said she'd like to start a nonprofit that would help massage therapists in our area continue and, and grow and be um, you know, profitable. And so she and I started, first was the Rochester Massage Alliance, and then we went statewide. It was the New York Massage Alliance. And her husband said, well, I'll build you a website so that you can get started. But then, you know, you'll take it over. So he builds us this website, and we start sending him uh, the content. And he's like, here's your password. <laughs> here's your login. I'm not putting the content in. You're all putting the content in. I just created the pages. So it was my first time getting into a WordPress website. And I, I was a little intimidated at first because, you know, I was convinced I was going to break something. Yeah. I'd never really, you know, been under the hood of a website before. And uh, so I, I started playing around and discovered I really liked it and that maybe I would be able to do some web stuff on the side. And so I said to him, I understand how to purchase a domain name and I understand how to work within a website. But how do I go from having a domain name to having the website? And like, how do I put it on host? How do I get WordPress there? And so um, she worked nights. She was a massage therapist. And he said, tell you what. You come over Thursday and make dinner for my family because they had four kids at the time. You come over Thursday, make dinner for my family. When the kids are cleaning up, I'll teach you how to do it. And so I went over there. I made spaghetti and meatballs and salad. And, and we sat down. We all ate. And then the kids cleaned up the dishes. And he and I sat down. And he says, this is how you install WordPress. And we, he wouldn't let me do a one but button install. He showed me how to download it, how to change the salt keys. He showed me how to upload it purchased hosting. By the time I left there that night, I had a WordPress website ready to work. And I wrote down, I, I wish I still had it. I had a piece of paper with just four things on it to do. And um, from that point on, I've, I've built over, I don't know, 300, 300 WordPress websites over the years, over five or six years. Um, well, maybe a little more than that, more closer to 10 years. But uh, yeah, so I for a while I had my own agency. I ran kind of freelance agency and did a lot of WordPress websites for people locally. And then I was doing a little more work uh, globally and the local meetup wasn't really working very well. Same guy running it. And he says, um, you know, it would be like, Hey, everybody free next Tuesday. Let's have a meetup. I say, you can't work there, things like that. You yeah. absolutely have to have a little more organization to build the local community. So he said, tell you what, I'm looking for somebody to take this over. And I said, I'll do it. And yeah. so 
I took over coordinating the Rochester meetup for WordPress and set up like a regular meeting every month and started to have speakers and, you know, and obviously always time to kind of go over people's questions and things that were going, you know, that they had questions about or they were troubleshooting and things like that. And so now we just have a regular meetup. Of course, the last few years we've been meeting online, uh, looking forward to getting back in person again, or at least having a hybrid way to do that. But I went from that to meeting Andrea Middleton at the first WordCamp US in Philadelphia and said, hey, we think we might like to have a WordCamp in Rochester someday. And she said, why someday? Why not this year? And so I actually, within the year, we had WordCamp Rochester. I started speaking at WordCamps all over the place. And as they say, the rest is history. Yeah, WordCamps are an amazing place to get involved. Um, Toronto's got a pretty vibrant uh, WordPress community in the area. Um, you know, you were just at State of the World, State of the Word back in uh-huh. December and had the pleasure of meeting Matt. I had the pleasure of meeting Matt. He was in Toronto. It was probably six or seven years ago. He came mm-hmm. in for a, specifically for a WordCamp meet and greet to meet the Toronto group, somebody had him up and uh, and that was an amazing experience. I think one of the reasons many of us stay with WordPress is because of the community. And you've kind of been able to continue that with your roles with Stellar WP and mm-hmm. Post Status and those two roles. Um, yeah. Why did you get into those two roles besides its steady income and, and that side of it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so a couple of years back, I, you know, I'd been speaking at camps, I'd been organizing camps and become um, a mentor for word camps. And so I was already, um, you know, within the community, I was volunteering with a lot of stuff on the marketing team. And uh, Big Orange Heart was looking for some volunteers to help with fundraising. And, you know, I was working at GiveWP at the time. And I'm like, well, I mean, fundraising is my thing. So I joined the fundraising team over there and became an integral part of the Big Orange Heart community. Um, I'm now the president of the Big Orange, of Big Orange Heart um, board and do a lot with WordFest there, one of the organizers. And, you know, it's just kind of, it's like, you don't just say one day I'm going to be in the community. I'm going to be a community builder. It really does build over time because yeah. people, you you know, I, I didn't set out to do it and it wasn't something that I had a strategy about at first. But I think part of it is gaining the trust of people that you work with, mm-hmm. um, people seeing that you're somebody that they can ask questions of, and and also being a do-gooder in the community. So, you know, I have all these projects that I've done for free. You know, I tweet out um, jobs on Wednesdays. Allie Nimmons and I started in, um, Underrepresented in Tech.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do a podcast about underrepresentation in technology. Uh, you know, I, I just... I volunteered for the WordCamp US. I'm on the WordCamp um, Europe team this year. You just you 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 start to build a body of good works, and two things happen. One is people see that you're doing good work, and they want to work with you, and they want to do things with you, and and sometimes even just ride your coattails. I get a lot of DMs asking me if I will, you know read somebody's book and write something for the cover and things like that. But also you become a big target in some places too, right? So, I mean, I've had my fair share of attacks over the years and people, you know, not believing that I'm altruistic and and really out to help people and not just in it for myself who have tried to, um, you know, cut me off of the knees and things like that. But, you know, I think if you just continue to do good in the world, that those, those are fewer and further between and those people Um, You know, they feel like they're throwing a boulder, but it's really just a pebble because I have the ability to withstand um, the slings and arrows, as they say. Yeah. And I and I would agree with you. There's a couple of things, you know, the minute you get involved, whether it's with an online community or an offline community and you you gain any type of profile, unfortunately, you become an attack for what I call the trolls of the community. Mm -hmm. And and it's a pain. I mean, I know, you know, since. I've taken on this LinkedIn group with Courtney Robertson. Uh, I I get attacks and DMs too more than I used to, so I can I can certainly sympathize with that. And and I truly believe, Michelle, honestly, you're out there doing uh, good work, and you are. And I I really believe it comes from inside your heart. I mean, your paper dot li paper is called the kindness paper, if I recall. So, you know that that says mm-hmm. a lot of who you are and what you believe in. And I think. Honestly, you should be commended for that, for trying so hard. Thank you. 
Um, you're welcome. And I think, you know, I think we've got some issues in our community right now. I know, um, I know I've spoken to uh, numerous people. I, I did a, an earlier podcast last year with Paul Lacey and we were talking about mergers and acquisitions and mm -hmm. Paul and I got into a very heavy community discussion. I've had discussions with people like Brian Gardner over the last couple of years of the community. And, and truly, I think we just need to keep working at it and we need to keep working at it hard. Um, Robbie Adair said it really best on Do the Woo a couple of weeks ago on Bob Dunn's podcast. And mm -hmm. Robbie said, you know, outside of our community, our clients in the rest of the world don't see any of the drama or the, or the garbage that's going on. Do you have any mm -hmm. thoughts on that or? You know, of course they don't, right? So there's WordPress users and there's WordPress community. And yep. most of the people in the WordPress community are WordPress users, right? But not every WordPress user is part of the community. And it's not that they can't be part of the community, but a lot of people just, they build a website. They have no idea that meetups exist. They've never heard of WordCamps. I mean, I, I know um, in the four years that I, almost four years I was working at Give, you know, I would talk to customers all the time who are building their WordPress websites for their nonprofits or their political, whatever. Um, and none of them had any idea. They'd be like, how can I find help? And I'd be like, well, have you checked with your local meetup? What's a meetup? You know, and I, or I'd say, hey, there's a WordCamp coming up in your area soon. What's a WordCamp? You know, so um, clearly there's, it's on the dashboard, but people don't read their dashboard, especially if they're just trying to survive and, you know, go get in there and make changes to their website, et cetera. And so I think that a lot of what happens is that a lot of the, the you know, the, the users who haven't, joined the community per se have no clue um any of the drama or anything that comes out they just know that an update happens they update their website sometimes there's a learning curve to what's been added or updated sometimes it's easy to make those changes um, and to roll with it and they really are unaware of any of the interpersonal issues that happen any of the struggles that happen um, between companies between people um or just you know on the the teams themselves in wordpress and i don't mean um interpersonal uh, struggles between people on the teams as much as, you know, for example, we, we had the delay in 5.9, you know, from December to January and uh, you know, some of those kinds of things, they just, they're just happy little clams. No, I happens on their dashboard and they update it, you know, kind of thing. And I, and I agree with you. And, and I think the pro the outreaching of our, our community is in many cases, like if you look at, the worst press community and post status, or you look at the community on Twitter, a lot of it is really developers, designers, and people who make a living and not necessarily the end users in the community. And it would be nice to, to kind of reach some more of those people, don't you think? Yeah, you know, for sure. I think there's lots of ways that we can um, pull people into the fold, but there's just, there's always going to be people who aren't interested as well. And that's okay, right? Yeah, if it's not their thing, mm -hmm. personally, instead of listening to negativity all the time, I'd rather them not be interested, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Cause I, yeah, for sure. I think, I think you know, you're pretty positive. I'm generally pretty positive. And we have our ups and downs, but we've got to keep going. And, you oh, know, for sure. it's funny, Michelle, somebody said to me the other day, you know, and it kind of started when they announced Gutenberg. It's got to be three years ago. And um, and three four. years. Uh, is it four now? <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was, a, it was well, almost four. It was, a, it was at a WordCamp US. US 2018. Yep. 2018. And the reason yeah. I remember the date was WordCamp Toronto was the weekend before. And that's when the announcement hit the Saturday yeah. that Gutenberg was officially going to be announced the following weekend. So, yeah. and I think, you know, there's a lot of people that say, oh, well, you know, that's what fraction the community. I don't, I don't agree with that uh, thinking. Um, I've played with Gutenberg. You've played with Gutenberg. You're, mm -hmm. You're, you've made a couple of sites using Cadence and Cadence Box, correct? Mm -hmm. I've yes. moved my agency site to Cadence and Cadence Box. Uh, nice. I did it as an experiment. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, and I've said this to many people, I've, I did it on a live site over time. And yep. so please don't, folks, don't do what I did because <laughs> don't. <laughs> it's a bad idea. 
The reason I did it on a live site was I had 200 blog posts I wasn't touching. And I had a, yeah. I have an active blog that posts a couple podcasts a week. So it was the only way to do it. Um, one of the reasons I, I did that, truthfully, was to see what the speed increase would be when I got a page builder. And mm -hmm. I will tell you, I added 10 points in speed to my GT metric scholar. So I did that. Wow. But yeah, I went from an 89 to a 99% like overnight. It was unreal. So That's awesome. it is. And it, it's, it's interesting. But I don't think Gutenberg's a problem. I don't think React's the problem. I don't mm -hmm. think .com or .org is the problem. I think it's some of the individuals who just look at everything kind of from a bad perspective is the problem, not the good perspective. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, change is hard. Change is hard for people in general, yep. right? Yep. And, you know, the more you've bought into something um, emotionally, not even, I don't even mean financially, but emotionally bought mm -hmm. into something, the harder it is to watch it change, right? So, like, you, you're you all in on WordPress and then suddenly you feel like the rug got pulled out from under you because you don't know what this Gutenberg thing is. You know, at the time that Gutenberg came along, I used to teach WordPress classes. Suddenly I didn't know enough about WordPress anymore to be able to teach those classes. And honestly, I haven't taught a class since because my life went in a different direction, et cetera. By the time I figured out Gutenberg, like, that ship had sailed for me. Not that I couldn't probably figure out how to go teach a class, but yeah. I just do different things now. So I think you get so invested in something that you think every change is a personal affront. No, I and agree. That and that it's difficult, right? The thing is, like, the people who decide today that they're going to use WordPress, that's native to them, right? They jump in. They learn it the way it is. They don't have to relearn anything. They don't have to change. They don't have to pivot. And so I think that it's some of the people that dig their feet in. It's like, I don't want to change. I don't want to have to learn something new. If I'm a developer, I don't want to have to learn React or I don't want to have to, you know, learn new programming languages and figure out how it goes together. Or even if I'm just this, you know, a, a, a end user, I don't want to have to learn how to do something different. Like, what is this patterns thing? What is this blocks thing? You know, kind of thing. So I think it's just change is hard. And, and when there's a change, there's a learning curve. Learning curve slows down your workflow, slows down your workflow impacts your um, your ability to earn money. And so I think it's just kind of a trickle down that way. Uh, but once people embrace it and learn it, uh, most people that I've talked to, they've either found a great way to work around it that makes them happy or they embrace it and they work within it and they're just as happy. Yeah, no, no kidding. Um, Courtney Robertson, who does a lot of work for the WordPress learning team, she mm -hmm. posted in the Slack today that every time she plays with blocks or Gutenberg, she learned something new. And I, I, I would agree with Courtney. Like I know I'm pretty well versed in blocks because I've dived into it. And every time mm -hmm. I do something different, I learn something new. So, but I, I've also had the mentality over the years where I'm kind of a lifelong long learner who puts things into practice. So when yeah. I learn something, I'm always learning and that's just kind of mm -hmm. the way I roll, so to speak. So yeah, for sure. Now, you were up in um, New York in uh, December. Wish I could have yes. been there, but with everything going on, uh, how was that experience from a community perspective? There were some amazing people there. There were some amazing people there. It was, I, I think, I mean, it, it was amazing in and of itself. The fact that I hadn't been anywhere with a WordPress community since uh, WordCamp Miami in 2020 made it even that much more amazing. Yeah. Uh, it was it was a small group of people. You know, I didn't see everybody uh, before I got there, but there were a core group of us that, I don't say core group, there was a, a bunch of us that were staying at the same hotel and, you know, eating our meals kind of together and that kind of thing. And just being in the presence of other people who like get me, <laughs> who understand what my day to day is like, you know, my, my daughter, she doesn't get it. My ex-husband, he didn't get it. You know, those kinds of things. Like my mother, she's like, I'm like, I'm, oh, I published a new website. Oh, that's nice, dear. I mean, you know, those the people that just don't understand uh, the things that you do on the day to day and being in the, in the presence of all those people is amazing. And then to be able to go to this very select event because, and, and not select because they were being, you know, I don't know, elitist, but uh, select because they, there's a limited number of people that they could include. Uh, to that event because of the COVID issues that we were that we're facing. Yeah, as, so true. You know, so as a world. true. 
And so I got an invitation to join. Other people, you know, applied to join. I was just like blown away that I was invited to be there. And Stellar said, absolutely, we will pay for, you know, pay your, your logic, we'll pay for you to be there. We want you to be there too. And um, so I flew out on Monday, flew back on Wednesday, spent all day Tuesday talking to people. You know, I had a meeting with Corey in the morning, um, met with uh, Mark Westgard from WS Form, um, you know, talked to people from Do The Woo and just, I mean, the whole, just, there was just a whole group of people there together and had, we, you know, like I said, we had some meals and things like that. And then to, you get to that place and, and like, okay, so I, I, I don't walk into any place I ride in because I have a scooter. Yep. So I ride into the, to the venue and like immediately somebody puts a glass of sparkling water in my hand, Angela and Josefa walk up and they're like, oh, we saved you a seat in the front. Good to see you. You know, uh, Matt Mullenweg walks over, shakes my hand. I'm so glad you could make it. And I felt like Cinderella <laughs> just arrived at the ball. It was amazing. And then to be present, to take pictures, to tweet the pictures live from being in the front row there, to ask questions and get answers and listen to other people ask questions and get answers. And then afterwards, there was a reception with, you know, great food and the opportunity to really just talk to one another. Um when I left there that night, I was sure I was going to turn into a pumpkin because it really did feel like one of those mountaintop experiences. Um, just from everything there, I, I, I asked Matt for an exclusive interview for post status. We walked to the other end of the room. He gave me a seven and a half minute interview, um, which is on the post status blog. You can listen to that if you're interested. It was about the status of jobs and WordPress and acquisitions. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it was one of those things where I just, I got to talk to a lot of people. I got to feel like I was really part of the community again, and not just from um, the other side of the screen. Yeah, it, it's so true. I mean, there's, there's people in that room I know really well. I mean, we were talking before we went to record Corey Miller. Mm -hmm. Who, yeah. who runs Post Status, Corey is, and I have to give a shout out to Corey, he's been a longtime friend, and I mean, going back over 10 years, and mm -hmm. frankly, Corey understands what community is all about, and he, here's somebody who's had his struggles, and he shares them quite openly, and then in that room was my good friend Bob Dunn, Bob's probably one of my longest friends in the WordPress space who I've stayed in touch with year after year after year. And that goes back 12 or 13 years now. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people like that and people like you, I, I mean, I honestly, I'm lucky to have the community we have. I mean, Topher and Kate were in that mm -hmm. room and, yep. uh, and Kate has now moved on to a position with automatic, which is yeah. absolutely amazing because we need, Truly, we need people like Kate working for Automatic. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. So I'm, so, I'm so happy for her. Yeah, so am, so am I very much. I, I haven't had a chance to catch up with her, but I will because uh, I'm looking at getting uh, Topher and Kate on in down the road in the future. So that will be good. Oh, perfect. Um, since we're kind of talking, one of the things you do with communities, you talk about jobs. And yep. I've I've been in many of the uh, Twitter space chats that you put on on oh, Wednesdays, either. which is really great. You do that. Last week, she had to even manage to conjure up some guests. To, so mm -hmm. poor Michelle didn't have to do all the talking for a change. <laughs> that is true. I mean, it, it is. And, and and you've got a uh, basically a job fair or a uh, job event coming up. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. April 8th is the WP Career Summit. And that is an event through Post Status that I'm coordinating. And it'll have two tracks. It'll have a track for job seekers and a track for employers. And I'm getting some, <laughs> getting some amazing speaker applications. It's going to be hard to narrow them down. I know every every person who ever you know puts together an event says that, but it really is true. Um, to, how, do you, how do you tell somebody no when you only have so many spots? But um, some really great speakers. So the, the job seeker part of things will be about how to find a job. You know, Maybe we'll have somebody talking about resumes and Putting together your portfolio, things like that, and then the employer side will have you know best practices for recruiting and how to recruit for underrepresented groups and how to do good onboarding and manage teams and things like that. Yeah. The whole thing is going to be sponsored by different companies. It's going to be run on the same platform that we use for WordFest. If you've been to WordFest before, through Big Orange Heart, 
we've hired the same team to run the event through that. So Dan maybe and um, Nathan Wrigley and uh, I can't remember who the third person is. Forgive me, whoever you are, uh, are going to be running the technical side of things for me. And then I'll have some MCs as well as every session will be recorded and then we'll have live Q&A with the speaker. So super excited about it because it's really going to give an opportunity for people to um, you know, I see people all the time looking for jobs and I see people all the time posting jobs and I just want to be somebody, the conduit that helps these people find each other so that we have good people working in good places. Yeah, that is, that is so true. And, uh, you've got a good team to help you out. The event should be great. And then correct me if I'm wrong. Aren't you also working on an online summit that's on Twitter only? as well? I am. So there's a, <laughs> I guess I'm just in a bunch of things right now, but we're having yep. our first ever post status Twitter conference. And so we will have people presenting online through Twitter. Uh, so it's not the same as going on stage, not the same as recording yourself, unless that's how you choose to do your tweets. But it'll be a series of 15 tweets per tweeter per presenter um, every half hour. So the first 15 minutes of the half hour will be the tweets themselves. Second half will be Q&A through Twitter. Everything will be tagged with our conference Twitter hashtag uh, so that we can put them into moments afterwards and have those to share out, but also so that people can kind of follow along and figure out the different topics they were interested in and follow those different presenters. So we've got some great people already applying to be in that. That's not until May. That's May 24th. So if you're interested in applying to be a presenter on Twitter, um, go ahead and go to the post status uh the post status blog, you'll find it there. Uh, there's a, a blog post called Announcing Post Status Twitter Conference. So if you just search our blog for Twitter Conference, you'll find it. And right on there is a place to be able to um, apply to present. Yeah, a couple, another couple good community initiatives going on. Michelle, in the future, where would you like to see our community go and grow? And I think one of the things we have to do is recognize the diversity of our community and start to build yeah. that side of it. How do you feel about that? Yeah. So, so underrepresented in tech dot com was a, is a, is a project that Allie Nimmons and I created because people were coming to both of us saying, I need more diversity and at this event or at work, do you know somebody you could recommend? <clears throat> and rather than us recommending people, because I can't think of everybody, we decided to create a database where people could opt into the database uh, and put themselves out there kind of, you know, hireable for either speaking, blogging, podcasts, uh, part-time or full-time work. And so underrepresented in tech.com, if you go there, you're an underrepresented person. It's free to join the database. We do vet people. So it's, you know, it's, it's, we do double check every application that we approve in there. And then anybody can search the database for free and it'll just it'll serve you up results of people that might be interested you might be interested in having as a podcast guest for example or to speak at a conference things like that and so out of that you know kind of ali and i are being asked to talk a lot about underrepresentation and diversity within <clears throat> excuse me within wordpress and within technology and so you know you ask me where, where do i want to see things grow i really want to see uh, people from underrepresented groups having a bigger, you know, pl more places at the table, so to speak, so that people who normally aren't viewed as people who might be hireable or um, to speak at their event or, you know, like I said, podcast guests, blogging guests, things like that, would be able to contribute um, in meaningful ways without having to scream and shout to be heard, but to be invited to those places. And some of that, you know, North America and Europe tend to be like the bigger places where um, WordPress bigwigs are, if you want to call it that, you know, some of the people who are a little bit more celebrated in the community, but WordPress is ubiquitous, you know, through Asia and, and South America and Africa and Australia. And so there's more to WordPress than just North America and Europe. And so reaching out to communities, um, you know, I've worked with, I've actually presented at communities in Africa, for example, um, at their meetups to talk about uh, what underrepresentedintech.com does. And we need to make sure that we are inviting more people in to do those things and giving them the means by which to contribute. It's not enough to say we want contributors, 
because some people don't have the the means to be able to do those things. They have the skill sets, but they don't necessarily have the internet and they don't have, you know, the, the time and the locations and things like that to be able to participate unless somebody is sponsoring them into those kinds of positions. And that's been a big conversation, right. In the last month, maybe about the community and about um, open source is, you know, it's a lot. And, and when Ali and I talk about it, it's a lot of privileged people that get to participate because their companies support them or because they make enough money in their day job that giving some time on the side doesn't cut into their ability to raise money for their family and their livelihoods. And so we really want to see people um, sponsored in so that they don't have to worry about if I contribute to an open source project or I contribute to you know a nonprofit organization or whatever it is that they're contributing to, that they're not disadvantaging themselves by using time that would that should be spent raising money you know through through work to support their livelihoods and their families. And so there's got to be a way that we can do that that we can sponsor people in. Um, I'm not sure. I, I'm not. I'm one person. I can't solve the whole problem, but definitely the key to getting more underrepresented folks in is going to be to find ways to help them be able to contribute through resources. And the way to sponsor people in, and I know we've talked about it on. It's been talked about on this week in WordPress. I've mm-hmm. talked about it. A number of other big people in the community have talked about. It don't think it always translates in the dollars per se it could be just you know we're having WordCamp us uh, us or we're having WordCamp europe and we're going to sponsor some underrepresented people to go to that WordCamp camp for what they do for the community and i think mm-hmm. things like that are just as important as the dollars Actually, sure. I have a dollar still come into play, right? Because if you're going to get yep. somebody there, there's airline tickets, there's hotel yep. space, there's meals that the, that some people just wouldn't be able to afford on their own. Mm-hmm. Um, until I until I worked for a company when I was on my own, I drove to every work camp. So I, yeah. I, I live in Rochester, New York. I drove to Nashville to go to work camp US. 15 hours in the car straight. That's a good drive. Down 15 hours. Yeah, right? And I had to figure out how I was going to pay. And I was bootstrapping myself there. Like, I was shoestring budget, right? And so, like, for Christmas that year, my dad gave me the hotel. And I had $300 in my bank and I, enough to get um, gas down there. But I, I was, like, eating out of the vending machine kind of thing because I just had to deal with what I had. Right. And so I was one of the people that it would have been awesome if somebody had sponsored me to go someplace like that. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I get that. I'm, I'm in the same boat. I'm not a minority, but I, you know, if I take time to give to the LinkedIn group or time to get give back to the community, in my case, that is, uh, that comes out of my working time and that's just the way it falls right now. And, Mm -hmm. you know, so that leads me to my next topic, since we're talking about community five for the future. Um, mm-hmm. How do you feel about that initiative that WordPress has got that more and more the, the bigger companies should actually um, give back to the community? You know, I guess I can look at it either way. I've, I've seen both sides of the argument and I'm, I'm, I don't put a lot of weight in Zodiac, but I'm a Libra and I, I really do try to find the balance of things. And I do see both sides of, of things there a lot. And I think that it, there's a multiple things that come into play. So five for the future is a great idea. Not every company wants to, and that's fine. Nobody should be forced or made to feel bad that, that they don't want to or can't contribute that way. Um, there are some people that want to be able to contribute and they find ways, you know, whether it's sponsored by their company or not, um, if they're freelance, things like that. I think it's a great idea in theory, but I think, again, in order to be fully um, inclusive, you need to find ways that you can um, can include those people who are either freelance or are underrepresented in ways or are um, unable to contribute, again, because of resources. So I think that there's a lot more work that can be done there. But I think that at its at its heart, I think it's a great idea. No, I, I agree. There's always circumstances and people just don't ever look into those circumstances. They just say, oh, 
they're not contributing, there's a problem, not realizing there's a, there's a lot of circumstances that go on there. You know, Absolutely. Michelle, I, I've really enjoyed the chat. Thank you for chatting about the community and WordPress. If somebody yeah. wants to get a hold of you, besides the million and one Slack channels you're on, where's the best <laughs> way to get you? Meetmichelle.online. If you go to meetmichelle.online, that'll get you linked up to me in all the different places. And that that's your new uh, website you've done, which is basically a link tree clone, if I recall right it Correct. is, yeah. I used I used Cadence, uh, the Cadence theme, Cadence Blocks to do that, and I uh, made my own link tree because I'm not giving Linktree my my traffic. I wanted to come to me. <laughs> of, co- of course, you do. What it branded? <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Michelle, and thanks for all you do for the community. Have an amazing day. It's my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks. A very special thank you to Michelle for joining me on this edition of the SDM Show. Thank you for listening to this edition of the STM Show. The STM Show is brought to you by Rob Cairns and Stunning Digital Marketing. For more information about Rob Cairns and Stunning Digital Marketing, go to stunningdigitalmarketing.info. From here, you can connect to us on social media, go to our website, and even go to the podcast to subscribe. This podcast is dedicated to my late father, Bruce Cairns. Dad, I miss you very much. Keep your feet on the ground. Keep reaching for the stars. Make your business succeed.